It's been roughly a month since the Russian mercenary leader Yevgeny Prigozhin was killed in a plane crash in Russia. Days before his death, Prigozhin had been in the Central African Republic, where his Wagner group is in charge of President Faustin Jean Touadera's security. But since Prigozhin's death, there is division in the country over Wagner's presence there. DW Zigoto Chaya Chameni reports from Bangui. Trezor Adum has never met nor seen Yevgeny Prigozhin. Yet, he is a pro Wagner supporter and a staunch believer in the group's presence here in the Central African Republic. Today, Trezor and his friends are paying tribute to Prigozhin at this Wagner statue in the heart of the capital. They want to show their respects to the head of the Wagner group after his death in an inexplicable plane crash in Russia on the 23rd of August. We cannot measure the greatness or the added value of what the Wagners have brought to the Central African Republic. In previous years, we have had peacekeeping missions, missions that were sent to the Central African Republic to secure our borders. But what did this achieve in terms of results? What have we seen? What have we known? We have only known repeated coups. We must support Russia so that we can never again speak of such a rebellion in the Central African Republic. The Central African Republic has been in the midst of a series of civil wars since 2003, which left three quarters of the territory under rebel control. The estimated 1,000 Wagner mercenaries stationed in the Central African Republic first came to the country in 2018 to help the government of President Touadera defeat rebel forces and fill in a security vacuum left by France after it withdrew its military forces from the country in 2016. A lot of people in the Central African Republic think the Wagner group, together with the Rwandan troops, have done more to quell the country's many rebellions than the French and the UN forces combined. While foreign observers accused the Russian paramilitary of committing atrocities, the majority of the civilians here think their successes are worth the price. But while the Wagner group has many supporters in the country, it also has its opponents. The Central African Republic opposition leader, Mohamed Kamun, was a former prime minister in President Catherine Samba Panza's transitional government and is currently leader of the Bay Africa Tikwe opposition party, meaning the Central African Republic for us all. He says the mercenaries don't belong in the Central African Republic. Not so much. Not only is it a group which does not come to help to develop and foster peace in Africa, this group is made up of people who came for self-interest and benefits. Whether it's the Charter of the African Union or the Charter of the United Nations, the activity of the Wagners is banned. They have come for the wrong cause and the wrong reason. Today, Central Africans are paying the price for their negative presence since the Wagners came in here. They exploit our timber, our mines, trade, etc. They have created unfair competition in terms of security. A country like CAR should instead rely on credible partners. With Prigozhin's death, the question on many minds is whether the Wagner Group will continue its operations in the Central African Republic, but this time under Kremlin authority. And if so, what will happen to the country if Russia withdraws the soldiers due to the pressures of the war in Ukraine? To talk more about the involvement of the Wagner Group in the Central African Republic, we've invited John Lechner. He's a journalist and researcher who has worked in the Central African Republic. He's currently writing a book on the Wagner Group, which is about to, re to be released next year. Now, it's been almost a month since Yevgeny Prigozhin died. How has that affected Wagner's work in the Central African Republic? Sure, and, and thank you for having me. I think uh, on the whole, what we can say at this point is that we haven't seen any major shifts in terms of operations or really any specific consequences thus far of Prigozhin's death. As I think your reporter noted, Wagner personnel are still absolutely in the Central African Republic. We're not exactly sure what the exact numbers are, but a thousand, perhaps a little bit more, uh, sounds pretty accurate. 
and the same faces who who were running operations before are continuing to run them. So not much uh, has changed in the past month. Mm. Now, Russia's priority right now is, of course, the war in Ukraine. What does that mean for its presence in Africa, uh, through, even through private militaries like the Wagner Group? I think Russia, the, the state, uh, the Kremlin itself benefited from Wagner's operations in Africa because, because others have, have noted, uh, Russia has has gained geopolitical advantage right now from just the narrative that it's not isolated following the invasion of Ukraine. And so that narrative has become more important and reaching out to Africa and cultivating those relationships ha has been key for, for the Kremlin and, and for the narrative that it's trying to tell Russians and, and the world more generally. Wagner itself has actually been at the forefront of, of creating those relationships for the Kremlin. And that despite the fact that they are obviously motivated by profit. They 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 played uh, in an incredible role in, in creating what Russia's interests in Africa are. Mm. Now you have said uh, about uh, and you've written about how the U.S. should rethink its own role to counter Russia and Africa. So what can uh, the U.S. do or should do? It's a great question. I mean, I think at the end of the day, we, we have to think about what type of uh, role Wagner is playing for for these countries, as I think a lot of the informants had suggested to your reporter, the, the the popularity of Wagner, specifically in the Central African Republic, is not just a product of Russian disinformation. It, it's a product of people feeling that that there has been a genuine improvement in, in security, and for folks who have lived through decades of conflict and precarity. Uh, that that that's not nothing. That that that's incredibly important. And so, uh, for the for the U.S. for the West who who are concerned about Russia's influence in Africa, they have to come with serious uh, a, a serious policy mm. or, or program that that would be able to replace uh, and, and keep that security for people. The journalist John Lechner. There. Thank you very much, John. Thank you.